Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. I'm liking what I'm feeling this morning. And I'm, well, it's been some times now we've been kindly thinking about this service. And since Brother Pounders contacted me some month ago, and uh, I told Brother, you know, I hope I didn't disappoint him this morning, kind of have butterflies inside, you know what I mean? One preacher told me, said, as long as you have butterflies, you're going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Realize how much we need God this morning, and uh, not only today, but every day, we need the Lord, don't we? Praise the Lord. So, it's good to be in the Texas camp meeting, and... Uh, of course, we've been, we spent about 20 years in Texas, but we've been gone now. Soon be about 16 years in, in the state of Louisiana. But we're glad to be here this morning and share something that we feel on our heart with you. Praise the Lord. How many is going to help me preach this morning, are you? All right. I see a lot of my friends out there, so you just, uh, you help me this morning. And uh, the Lord will... Touch our hearts, because I feel like that we have something that God has laid on our heart, and we want to share it with you. If you will, stand with us in reading of the Word of the Lord. If you got your Bible and you want to follow us, turn to the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, and also the fifth chapter. We read a few verses of Scripture from each one. Acts 4, 13 through 20. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifested to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which, have, which we have seen and heard. Say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Then in the fifth chapter, in verse 12, And by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they were brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There, there came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing six folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Would you love him before you sit down? Praise the Lord! 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 All right, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. From the reading of this scripture, and uh, we'd like to use this thought this morning for a little while, that uh, in thinking about this service and praying about it, and asking God what would be His will, I'm, all, I'm a firm believer that in every service, God has a purpose and a will for that service. Praise the Lord. And uh, I believe that God has a will for this service this morning. 
And uh, I want to preach from the reading of this Word of God, apostolic shadow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've been trying to preach now for some 31 years. And about after around 29 or 30 years of preaching, God began to talk to my heart. And uh, some year or year and a half ago, in uh, considering the hour that we live in and uh, the purpose of the church of being here, and uh, considering the church as it was in its beginning, praise the Lord, then I begin to think that there is something that I haven't reached, there's something that I haven't touched yet as a Pentecostal preacher and been pastoring churches and preaching for a long time. And I begin to talk to God about the situation. Praise the Lord. Realizing that we're living in the end time. How many believe that? Amen. Praise the Lord. And if I realize that if I ever intended to present a church to God without a spot or blemish or wrinkle, I had to find out what God wanted me to preach and what direction he wanted me to go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I begin to talk to God about certain things and, and why this and that and something else. And, and uh, I begin to ask God, there surely is an answer. Surely there is a reason that we're not seeing the things happen like I believe that God wants it to happen. Are you going to help me now? Right. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, I begin to be disturbed, and I believe there's other preachers that's, that's being disturbed in this hour. Hallelujah, because, uh, listen, there is soon to leave this world a bride of Christ. Hallelujah. And it's up to the preachers of the United Pentecostal Church uh, to get your congregation ready for the sound of the trumpet. Hallelujah. And I begin to think I'm not concerned about a pat on the back whether they think that I'm the best preacher that ever got behind the pulpit, but I want to know that I have heard from God and forgive them, thus said the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. That when I stand at the judgment bar of God, that they can't point their fingers at Brother McFarland and say, if you'd have told me so, I would have done what you said. Praise the Lord. If it ever was an hour that we need to hear what the Word of God says, it's now. Yes, so I begin to walk through my church day after day seeking the face of God and asking Him for directions. And we'd been some time that uh, we had just hadn't seen anything like I wanted to see it. And probably some of you have had a church that it's been too long since somebody has received the Holy Ghost. It's been too long since we've heard people talking in tongues. It's been too long since we've baptized someone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I believe that Jesus Christ is the same today, hallelujah, as he ever was, don't you? The scripture said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God hasn't changed, and he never will change. People change, their attitude changes, and we change with the, the fashions and fads of the world. We change. But listen at me tonight, friend. We ought to get a hold of, of the horns of the altar and get a hold of the Shekinah glory of God that will liberate and set men free. Hallelujah. And not to worry about the fashions of the world, but we realize, I believe that holiness is what what's brought us to this hour and it's what's going to take us to leave here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If get that one on, I may want to walk a little bit here directly. I'm feeling all right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I said, God, would you tell me what am I doing wrong? I fast a praying and just 
I want to know, God, what, what is it? And we organize and we have choirs. We have talent. That's all beautiful. I wouldn't want to do without it, would you? Come on, say amen. amen. Do you appreciate the talent that you have in your church? Amen. Praise God. But I somehow believe that we organize and promote and organize and promote, get good choirs, quartets, what have you. Praise the Lord. But God spoke to my heart and said, Son, let me tell you something. Hallelujah. How many believe that God talks to your heart? Do you believe that God talks to a man's heart? Do you believe he talks to your preacher? Do you love your preacher? Do you love your church? Come on, it's time to quit bickering and biting and fussing and fighting and malice and envy. It's time to love one another and get a hold of the power of God. Hallelujah, because we need it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't know where this comes out here or not, brother. So the Lord began to speak to my heart. Hallelujah. And uh, the Holy Ghost made me to realize, I don't guess you're supposed to walk with these things, are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost began to talk to my heart and let me to know that it's not in just how much. Thank you. Thank you. It's just, it's not in just how well you're organized. The answer is not in that, but I believe in organization. Don't get me wrong now. Come on. You don't have much of a home if it's not a little bit of organization in it. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe in being organized. But the Holy Ghost let me to know that the answer, hallelujah, to having a church of the bride of Christ ready, it's not in the organization. It's not how well you organize. It's not in what kind of a choir you've got. It's not in your musicians that you have. Hallelujah. But he told me, son, it's in preaching the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he directed me. He said, you can find your answer, Brother Pounders, uh, just like Ezekiel found it. Hallelujah. Ezekiel found the answer. Hallelujah. And God let me to know that it's in preaching the word of the Lord that's going to get us ready to leave here. Well, you know when I like to see people shout, uh, it's when somebody's a preaching. Come on, not when somebody's a singing a song, but when somebody's a preaching. Hallelujah. That's when I like to see If you can shout when the preaching is going on, honey, you're all right. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So I began to wonder what the Holy Ghost was talking about when he said Ezekiel had the answer. So I just hurriedly taken my Bible and I went to the 37th chapter of, of Ezekiel. Praise the Lord. And uh, the Lord just said, well, Ezekiel set him down out there and he was in the midst of some dry bones. I've preached to a few dry bones. But if there's some dry bones here this morning, listen, hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. God bless your heart. Don't wait for somebody to sing a song that will tickle your ear. But let the word of God go down deep in your heart. And you can hear what the Spirit said to the church. Yeah. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I just begin to follow Ezekiel. And the Lord said, he looked at him and said, Ezekiel, do you think they can live? And he looked at him and he said, I just don't know. <laughs> there was some doubt whether he thought they could live or not. He said, I don't know, Lord, but you know. The Lord knows, doesn't he? I said, the Lord knows. You know what he said to Ezekiel? He said, son of man, preach to him. Preach to him. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the feelings. When I get behind the pulpit, I don't worry about your feelings. I'm thinking about the wrong range. Hallelujah. Getting you 
ready for the trip of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said he began to preach. And when he began to preach, uh, the b- bones began to get together. Hallelujah. And there was a little noise that taken place. Uh, hallelujah. But they said there still wasn't any life. No life. Glory. Woo. Praise God. He said, what am I going to do now, Lord? I've got them a little ways. I tell you what, I've been preaching for a long time. And I said, God, it seems like I get them to a certain place. And that's as far as I can get them. That's a lot of people that too, they're afraid to get too close. Yeah. Hallelujah. Afraid maybe you might want them to do something. But let George do it. Honey, listen at me this morning. If you're getting ready to leave here, if you intend to make it, you better forget about the pleasures of the world. You better It's a fiction to leave here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? He said, Lord, I've got them this far. There's a little noise. They're a little more organized than they were. They have come together a little better. I believe we're getting together a little better, don't you? How many believes we are? Come on, how many believes we are? I thank God for the United Pentecostal Church. I've been in it now for some 30 odd years. Hallelujah. And I'm afraid you're going to have me around until the Lord takes me by the way of the grave or the trump of God sounds and the dead in Christ gets ready to leave here. Hallelujah. Somehow I'm thinking, I believe I'm going in the rapture. Well, glory to God. So he said, son of man, Preach to the wind. You've preached to the people now. And I've been preaching to our city for a long time. Preaching to the people. Hallelujah. And the Lord that just thrilled my heart when, he, when I began to catch a little thought here. Said, son of man, preach to the wind. And looking through the Bible, that's kind of symbolic of the Spirit. Yeah. Of the Holy Ghost. Whoa. And the Lord was telling me, Brother Pounders, uh, preach to the Holy Ghost a while and tell the Holy Ghost what you want it to do for you. Woo, come on. He said, when I want you to come and blow on these people. Holy Ghost, come this morning and blow on this people. Hallelujah. I'd like for the Holy Ghost to come like a rushing mighty wind and blow on this people this morning. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So I begin to talk to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, I want you to do this. Do you believe you can talk to the Holy Ghost? That's what he told Ezekiel. Preach to the wind and tell the wind that you want it to come and blow on this people. So when I began to talk to the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, Brother Pounders, and began to talk, preach to my people, hallelujah, one, not too long after this, and I was, uh, I began to go down the line, sit Charlene Dandy in the church, sits across the aisle from my wife, and uh, she looked over at my wife and said, is that Brother McFarlane? Is that him? I've never heard him preach like that. Hallelujah, but I tell you what, uh, I begin to think, my God, listen at me this morning, and you may never ask me to preach again uh, in the Texas camp meeting, I don't know, but I'm here to tell you this morning that the Word of God is telling us uh, how to get ourselves ready, get on the wedding garment, hallelujah, I want you to know that there's a lot of things uh, that I'd like to see in this world, oh, hallelujah, but the thing that God spoke to my heart, listen, that your greatest thing that we need in this world it's not long-haired playboys, uh, but we need apostolic shadows. Uh, we need somebody with the power of God. Uh, hallelujah. That's willing to preach what you give it to him. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Listen, we don't need to look back the world and act like the world. Uh, we don't need all of this thing we got. But we need power. We need power. Hallelujah. 
Aleluia! We need apostolic center. We need apostolic influence. We need apostolic power. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Somehow I feel like that we went through an era that we was in preaching competition. We wanted every time we get behind the pulpit, see if I could out preach so and so. But I don't care if I don't preach uh, like nobody. I'm just not worrying about it. I want to preach like God wants me to preach. Yes, and it may not sound good, but I ain't worried about what you're thinking about me this morning. Hallelujah. But I get disturbed. I look at Pentecost sometimes and I get disturbed. And I said, my God, where's all of this excess jewelry? Where's it coming from? Hallelujah. Where's it coming from? My God, we don't need it. Listen, if we begin to look like the world and act like the world, we're going to lose our influence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But when we walk down the streets, when people see us, hallelujah. Listen, my God, if, if God's the same, do you believe he is? Come on, do you believe he's the same? Well, if God's the same and his power's the same, if Peter shattered and they said, oh, the power of God was so real, influence of Peter was so great, if I can just get in the shadow, that's all I need. I'll get what I want from God. If God's the same, listen, in this closing hour, the Holy Ghost spoke to me, and God's saying, I want men, I want men, hallelujah, that'll walk in this world with a hole in the shadow, praise the Lord, with the power of the Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm an old, one of the old fuddy duddies, if that's what you want to call it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of known in my section as one of the footy duddies hallelujah but that's still alright that's still alright thank God I believe oh, the, if the trump of God sounds oh hallelujah right now there's going to be some people in our city Louisiana that's ready to go hallelujah that's ready to go Can I preach like I preach to them? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this is a good place. You may use a pen knife on a lot of it. You can cut it out if you want to. Hallelujah. But that's still all right. Praise the Lord. But I, t I tell my folks, I said, let me tell you something. Praise the Lord. If I get up yonder, we get up there. And uh, it wasn't required of what I'm preaching to you. Hallelujah. God lets them in with their television and all the jewelry and, and all the long hair. God lets them in. I said, we haven't lost a thing. But if suppose we get up there and he don't let them in. We've gained it all. We've gained it all. Come on, we've gained it all. Hallelujah. That's the reason why that I preach like I preach. Because we need apostolic power like we've never needed it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. And go ahead and worship him. I like that. Praise the Lord. I preached 45 minutes while my whole congregation stood. They never did sit down. They'd shout a while and I'd preach a while. They'd shout a while and I'd preach a while. Listen, that's all right because we're here to have church. Praise God. I told my church, I said, let me tell you folks something. It's time for you to quit just coming to church. It's time for you to be the church. 
It's time to just quit coming to church. It's time to be the church. You know, it's a lot of people always like to sit right on the very back. Just one step from being out. Hallelujah. Come on. Just like one step of being out, they like to oh, sit right on the back. Hallelujah. And they never get involved. Oh, hallelujah. Let sister so-and-so, let them shout. Let them do the worship. Uh, preacher, if you can help me any, do it. Uh, hallelujah. I'm here just a little while. Hurry up and get it over with. Uh, I want to go home. But when you come to the church of God, you ought to say, I'm here, Lord. Speak to my heart. Let me feel your touch. Let me have your power. How many wants to be an apostolic shadow in this closing hour? Woo! Whether you believe it or not, what you say, how you act, where you go, it has its effect on somebody. Yes, it does. It has its effect on somebody. Hallelujah. Well, I told Brother Pounders I wouldn't need very much time, but when you get started, for a mortal to be touched by immortality, there must be a lasting effect. It's got to be. Praise the Lord. And for a human life to be touched by the very source of life, there's got to be something of dynamic power involved. Hallelujah. That's the reason why in the scriptures that I've read here to you that they looked at them and said, well, uh, I don't know so much about their education. I don't know so much about just how smart they are. They don't seem to be very smart to us. But one thing we've got to say, they've been with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not caring about how you're dressed. Hallelujah. How much money you got. What kind of a car you drive. What kind of a home you live in. I'm interested in have you been with Jesus. Come on. That's the thing of the hour. We need the power of God. And you're going to have to be with Jesus. I'm trying. Well, praise the Lord. Come on and love him with me, will you? Oh, glory to God. I tell you what, if you do what you feel like doing, oh, and the Holy Ghost is telling you to do, I want you to know that this place would come alive and fire would fall in this place this morning. If you don't be God, we can have healings take place right now. If you don't be God, somebody can get the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. We need apostolic power. Hallelujah. 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 Did you know Peter and John literally radiated a power of God that stood out 
Let them to know that I've been with Jesus. And I believe it's possible for us to radiate a, a influence or a reflection, if you believe, that will make the world know that we have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that's what we need. We need to let that reflection, hallelujah, radiate. Let them know that we haven't been flirting with the world, but we've been with Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Well, you can sit down or keep standing. It, it doesn't make any difference. I believe the religious leaders of that hour somehow something different about these men, and I wonder what it is. Oh, hallelujah! Does. Aren't you glad for somebody to look at you and say, well, there's something different about that individual. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know what it is, but I've been traveling across the country and step out of my car and, and have, tell them to fill it up with gasoline. And before they get it full, they said, are you a preacher? <laughs> I said, I'm afraid so. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, it's the day and the hour. It's time for people to look at us and say, there's something different about them. Hallelujah. You know what the difference was? Peter and John had been with Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I believe they looked at them and said, now, these men's actions and influence reminds us of somebody. I wonder who it is. Hello? The way these men walk, the way they act, and the way they talk reminds us of someone, and I wonder who it is. Hallelujah. I tell you, listen, why I'm preaching to you this morning, the world needs men and women, boys and girls, that the world can look at you and say, they remind me of someone. Who is it? I want to be reminded that it's Jesus. That it's Jesus that we've been with. It's Jesus that has anointed us. It's Jesus that we feel his power. We want the world to see Jesus. Come on, say praise the Lord. Praise Lord. Well, I've got to bring this to a close. Hallelujah. And we'll close out here in just a little bit. I want you to know the impact of the first church, the power and victory of its leaders caused the people to bring the sick and if we could just get them in the shadow think of it I said the impact the power the victory of the leaders of the early church it began to eat on me hallelujah and I said God I know that I've already started down the hill most of my preaching days is about over with but I feel like that it's going to be better now than it ever was. I may not have but just a few years left, hallelujah, to preach this. Oh, yes, but I believe that it's going to be better because, listen, when I begin to listen to the voice of God and realize that this is the hour, hallelujah, that the impact, the power, and the victory, hallelujah, is going to have to be wrapped up in the hearts and minds of the leaders of this church. Hallelujah. Help us to realize that we don't realize. I want to preach brothers and brother pounders. I want them to think that I'm the best they are. No, but I want Jesus to put approval upon my ministry. Praise the Lord. Everybody say apostolic shatter. Come on, apostolic shatter. Or influence, if you please. Reflection. 
What kind of a reflection are we casting? Hallelujah. A world sits in darkness today. Their eyes is glazed over. Their hearts are broken. Upon the sharp rocks, it seems like a bleak despair and hopelessness. Seems that there's no hope. And all of that coupled with their lack of knowledge of God adds to the dilemma of the modern man. Many people this morning, here we are in this place enjoying the presence of God. But there's a lot of hopeless people out yonder. And their life is miserable. All that. Witchcraft under the many and various guises keeps raising its ugly head. Immortality has become the norm of the day. Yes, the world sits in darkness, children. Are you hearing me? The influence of darkness is shrouded thousands of souls but today God's are calling for the church don't worry about all of the things of life don't worry about just uh, well should we say maybe the minor things of life worrying about Things that's, that doesn't have any effects really. But what we need to be worrying about, what kind of a reflection, what kind of a shadow am I casting in the evening time? In the evening time, saints, what kind of a shadow? Is it a shadow that they would want to bring the sick that they could just get in the shadow. That's all it needs. Come on, children. God bless your heart this morning. I know, and I was talking to God, I said, God, I know that I'm a fighting spirits that I never fought. Yes, sir, we are. Amen. Come on, after preaching 30 some odd years, listen, I fight things that I never dreamed that I'd ever come up against. Come on, spirits that we fight against, spirits that rise up, uh, show their ugly head. Listen, God bless your heart. Uh, if we survive and have a church ready, he said, except I shorten those days, there'd be no flesh saved. Uh, unless we come to bats, uh, uh, hallelujah, unless we get a hold of the power of God. Uh, listen at me in this last hour, that we can show forth the power of the almighty God uh, like God wants us to. Listen, we're going to find ourselves liking and we fail in some areas that God don't want us to fail I said I know I'm a fighting lukewarmness and you know that yeah. unconcernedness yeah. worldly pleasure come on hello is your phone ringing you know that to be so. God bless your heart. But I preach to our city that I'm a firm believer. Listen, when the doors is open, you're supposed to be here. Hallelujah. It's time for you to get in. Listen, it's time, hallelujah, for you to pray up, pay up, and pack up, and get ready to leave here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this is the evening time. This is the closing hour. God bless your heart. And I'm thankful to tell you this morning that the Holy Ghost I say unto you, let your light shine. Let your light shine in the dark hour. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Would you stand and praise the Lord?